What's up, everybody? On today's episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast, we have the members of the Hip Hop Amino Review Team here to talk about some of the worst albums of the year, uh, talk about Eminem's new album, do a little bit of a mic check, some shots to the dome, and more. All this on today's episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode 73 of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. I'm Jared. I'm Jay. And we are back and at it again. And uh, as you heard in the intro, uh, we have DJ Roll Tide, Sean Smith, and Aziz from the Hip Hop Amino Review Team. What's up, fellas? How you doing, guys? It's great to be back again. What is up, y'all? Hey, thank you guys for coming on. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. Thank y'all for coming on. Welcome back, DJ Roll Tide. We actually had you on here with Ledge, uh, uh, you know, a few episodes back. So, yeah, coming back, man. Thank you for coming back. Absolutely, no problem. Yeah, and I know we listen. We listen to you know y'all's reviews of known and way unknown albums all the time. So uh, yeah, so it's good to finally have y'all as a team. Uh, you know, I, I guess team. Minus no no pun intended, but yeah, as a team, minus one. Yeah, uh, on the show. Um, and, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're definitely happy that, that, you know, we're able to, to get this going, get this together and, uh, you know, get y'all back on here. And today, uh, is one of those days in rap history, uh, you know, where we want to talk about a bunch of stuff in the music, uh, in the music biz, especially with stuff going on right now. So, uh, why don't y'all, why don't y'all tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, the hip hop amino review team. And I know y'all been going strong for about a year now, if I'm not, if I'm not correct. Uh, so, about, yeah. six, about six months. Six yeah. months. Right. It's six months, man. I thought it was longer than that. I guess y'all did so many reviews, it seemed like it's longer. So yeah. Uh just talk about the team, talk about stuff y'all do, what y'all review, how you think it's going, uh, you know, what you see for your future, all that jazz. Since I I think uh since this is pretty much my like baby, my idea mm-hmm. to form. I guess I'll go first. Pretty much this came to me like Hit, I saw this community as something that was growing at the time when I just when I just like got into it. So I was like, "What is this community missing?" I know people are like they're posting their own reviews, they're they're like talking about their opinions on music, but we don't officially have anything like that we can that can represent us. Mm-hmm. So it was my idea to form this. At first, we had uh, f- I think five members. Okay. Five or six members, but yeah, there was five. Yeah, okay. uh, one the, his phone got stolen, so we had to like boot him off for a couple months. <laughs> and then he came back later on, <laughs> but at that time, I don't think he had any more interest to like continue reviewing. Uh-huh. And then one, one because of college, he had to leave. But then on our on our logic review, Smith, that's when he first joined. Yeah, boy, and he's been okay. here since. Pretty much what. Dope. What this whole thing is about is pretty much putting our opinions out there. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes when I watch like a dead end hip hop episode or I watch a needle drop episode, I can sometimes picture myself going back and forth with them with them in terms of music. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I know FIFO's saying this, <laughs> but what if I told him that he was wrong? Yeah. And yeah, I sometimes like I debate myself in my head and so yeah, I guess I had a knack for this when I first started. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's, that's dope. That's cool. Now, uh, and Aziz and Aziz and Sean, uh, I know. I guess Sean, you came in a little bit later, but uh, you know, what do y'all? I guess what y'all? What y'all's take on? I guess on y'all's uh, team so far, and 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 your personal contribution. Uh, you know, how do you feel that? I guess that that is. Uh, it's received, and you know how you. I don't know what. What do you think about it all? Uh, I think it's dope. I like uh, the reception we're getting so far, especially from the uh, the Amino app itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm h- hoping that this coming year, though, we could grow a bit more on a uh, YouTube. Mm-hmm. I feel okay. like uh, we could have more subscribers on there. I'm hoping that happens, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I mean, I'm pretty happy with everything. Uh, I'm glad I was able to join the team because uh, yeah. I like reviewing albums and stuff. Because uh, before, before I was on uh, the Hip Hop Mino review team, I was actually a 
posting uh, written album reviews on the Amino. Okay, but yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't really do that as much anymore because right. most of the stuff I want to review is a. Uh, we handle it either on the HR or the Underground Zone, which is me and DJ segment. Well, I'll mm-hmm. have DJ talk about that a bit more. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's me now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we start this little segment. Uh, uh, Iz started this little segment idea called "Why We Just Start Our Own Little Side Series So We Can Review Like Classic Underground Albums." Mm-hmm. So I said. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so he said we could choose another member. So I chose Smith because me and Smith almost listened to the same music. Okay. A couple of weeks later, and we called it the Underground Zone. And um, basically, it's just a little side series that we do. This pretty much started around, I believe, the last week of August. And we constantly try to give the best reviews for the classic and underground albums that we can. Nice. All right, all right. So how do you guys actually choose... The albums we, that you're gonna review. We do polls. We we do polls. We sometimes if it's like something major, like an mm-hmm. Eminem album or Tyler or Jay Z's last albums, we mm-hmm. we will review it, bar none. But if if it's like a slow week, we usually put it up to a poll. But with Let's UZ, go. but with UZ, we kind of do the same thing. But me and Smith are always back and forth about what albums we usually pick. But 25 percent of the time, we usually do it with a poll. Yeah, yeah okay. like uh, for UZ, we'll do like one week, it'll be a poll of all my choices, and whatever wins out of that, we'll do it. And then, like, the next week, we'll do something like DJ gets to pick all what's going to be on the poll, and then mm-hmm. he'll, we'll do that. And then, and then, like, if there's like a major underground release that we're not going to cover in uh, the main part, the main thing is part. Then uh, we'll do that, like Sean Price. Like we didn't do a poll for that. It was just a yeah. We did the pretty major did, release. Yeah, we did the Imperious Rex yeah. review. Yeah, yeah. So we just did that. Then we did other classic reviews, like the Brother Lynch Hung album. We did the Atmosphere God Loves Ugly album. Mm, we did the Apollo it. Brown. We did the Apollo Brown Anchovies album. I mean, also, also I want to add that UZ. I don't. I, real time, you, you can't give me the, all the credit. It wasn't pretty much my idea. <laughs> I mean, I have to give you credit. I mean, you sprouted the idea and stuff first. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good though. You know, you're showing each other love. It's all good, regardless. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Regardless. We're just happy. We're just getting a good audience to check out our content that we work hard every single time that we do, just to make our audience happy. Honestly, we're actually surprised that our audio reviews are getting more spins. Mm-hmm. Because first, when we were on SoundCloud, we we hit that limit. We like, oh, what are we gonna do now? So uh, then we yeah. moved to Audio Mac, and we just grew a bigger audience on Audio Mac. Mm-hmm. Uh, we I have no idea. Like our highest review listens are probably two point three or two point four k, and we had no idea we'd even hit that number. Like during this time, especially because our YouTube, our YouTube, we draw in at least thirty. Uh-huh. Uh, but on when we review an album on Audio Mag, it's like sixty to eighty, and then it grows from there depending on who reposts it or who yeah, right. likes it. That's dope. That's dope. It is dope. I haven't even. I've never. I've never even used Audio Mac. Is that is that like uh, is it? It's, based a, it's like similar to it's similar to SoundCloud. I use Audio Mac in the past. Audio okay. Mac is pretty much. It's not. It's like SoundCloud, but I think its features are more limited. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. That's cool. Interesting. That's cool. I have to check that out then. Yes, indeed. Check uh, that out. All right. Well, Jay, what do you think, Jay? Is it time for the it's shots? Time to bust the off them shots? I think it's time to bust off those shots. So here we go. If you don't know what <laughs> ten, We usually do 10 shots to the dome But today since we have Three guests We're going to limit those shots to Two shots Or actually four shots Two per person There you so, go uh, two, two yeah. And yeah And I mean we're just, we're just going We're going to ask the question 
y'all answer, you know, to well, however you like, uh, you know, just answer the question like that as honest or whatever as you want. Uh, uh, yeah, we just want to get y'all's thoughts on some random foolishness. So, Jay, uh, go ahead, bust off that first shot. All right. First shot. If you could trade places with any rapper for a week, who would it be? Jay Z. Nice. Okay. You got, you Inspect the deck. Mm. Okay. Wow. I'm doing Eminem. <laughs> okay. All right. That's nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Jay Z right comes there. with some uh, some perks. You got a uh, you got Beyonce for one, but of course you got to deal with some kids that's, too. That's the number one thing I was thinking of actually. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't care about the money until I like noticed I said Jay Z about that boohoo tea. <laughs> that's dope alright cool let's see here okay so uh, this is a little random if you were a box of cereal which cereal would you be and why <laughs> I- I'm being fruity pebbles cause I fucked with fruity pebbles <laughs> yeah you would be fruity pebbles wouldn't you <laughs> bro I, you know, I fucked with that shit bro that's what that's I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> For me, I, probably, I would be Fruit Loops because fucking fruit, yo. Got <laughs> all the fruits, man. Got all these fruits. Man. <laughs> okay. He's so hardcore. Somebody, who didn't answer? Somebody didn't answer. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'd, I'd choose Special K. Okay. Okay. I don't know. It's just Special K. I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that, that just completely went... <laughs> Because it's a cereal I ate this morning. It's the only one that came to mind. <laughs> wow, you must be super serious and professional if you're going with Special K. Yeah, man. Or a, or a pretentious vegan. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I was about to say very healthy. Very healthy. Person. Well, very healthy. Wow, fruity pebbles, fruit. A special K. All right, cool. What you got? All right. Oh, uh, man. This next question. If. Your life could be summed up in the the name of an album title. What would it be? Ooh, I don't like shit. I don't go outside. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's a really good question. Midnight no, no, no. because I give a positive vibe. All right. Oh man. Is there a name? Okay, everybody. I choose everybody. Logic, nice. everybody. Okay, that's cool. That's and why would you choose everybody? Good question. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> is that just? Is that just? Uh, is that just a microcosm of what your life is? <laughs> you all about everybody or what? I mean, I'm I'm a brown person, a suburban brown kid listening hip hop. I don't. I don't think there's any album title I can uh, choose that re- that's relatable. So mm-hmm. I chose everybody. That's dope. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. All right. Cool. Well. Okay, guys. Okay. So y'all know the man, the myth, the legend, the guy who says "Es it. Of course. Oh God. Your boy, little pump. Uh, if you were if you were Lil Pump what is the next tattoo you would get I'm a fucking retard <laughs> and where would you put it on oh, my center of my fucking chest <laughs> oh man that's great uh, yeah, so I was Lil okay. Pump damn if you just I'm probably getting it. Gucci Gang on my forehead. <laughs> Gucci Gang. All right, all right, that's cool. Okay, I probably ch- I'd probably choose. Damn, y'all are y'all have really good questions, man. <laughs> <laughs> I probably get a skedit, but I put it on my dick. Uh. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. When, when, he, when he gets yeah, when he gets older. 
<laughs> will it just be like it's get just like that short when he gets older, or will it get longer? I don't know. Man, the, the letters might even Same. change when he gets older. Yeah. It's might might go as <laughs> might it or as it. It'll be like as it. It'll be like some, yeah. uh, some gibberish or something like that. <laughs> wow. All right. Let's see here. Is that it? Was that it? Was that, that it, Jay? Yeah, that was that was it. That, that was four shots. shots of the dome. That was four shots, man. Four shots of the dome. Dome. All right, cool. Well, uh, we know that y'all would trade places with Jay Z, Inspector Deck, and Eminem. Um, y'all would eat Special K, <laughs> but wash it down with some Fruit Loops and Fruity Pebbles because you fucks with that. Uh, <laughs> you say that you would never go outside because you don't like shit. Uh, and you'd be a midnight marauder with everybody. And um, yeah, yeah, you're retarded. You love the Gucci gang. And when you go skeet, 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 you say, Eskitty, Eskitty, Eskitty. All right, cool, fellas. Thank you for uh, taking those those four shots to those four shots to the dome. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, yeah, we'll be right back after this commercial break. What up, everybody? This your boy, B-Rob, host of the Random Rams of Rob podcast. While you're taking your break, using your hooks, rubs, and spices on your love boxes and everything, tapping them oh so gently and vigorously at the same time, I want you to tune in on iTunes, Stitcher, and everywhere else that you listen to your podcast and check out the hashtag Blackout Podcast. Why? Because we blacking out. Hey man, this is Chuck. We from the Whatever Man podcast, and we ain't out of here slanging and banging and doing wild shit, fucking with bitches and big ass white girls. We listening to the hashtag Black Eyed Podcast, and you should too, you degenerate bastard motherfuckers. <laughs> Hey folks, it's me, Big D, and me, Little R, from the Bro Rons Podcast, and you're listening to Jared and Jay on the incredible Hashtag Blackout Podcast. So when you're done here, check out the Bro Rons Podcast. You can find us on Podomatic, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Cornucopia Radio. Now back to Hashtag Blackout, and remember to tap your love box, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just sound like a creeper. What up, everybody? This is DJ from the Just In Time with the JT Baggers podcast. When I'm not going down a rabbit hole with my two buddies, I'm listening to the hashtag Blackout podcast and rubbing all my meat down with some hooks, rubs, and spices. I'm blacking out. All right, people, we're back. We're about to jump into this mic check by Manny Mackins. We reviewed some of his music some episodes ago, and he sent us some new stuff. So we are about to check it out. And as always, this is like a live listen, first listen for all of us. Uh, and we just react, give our uh, opinions. This is uh, pretty much a positive, uh, you know, critique at the end, you know, trying to give shed some give some positive vibes to up-and-coming artists and not... Uh, not really bash them in a, in a bad way, if you if I must say. So uh, yeah, we'll jump into this and we'll we'll be right back. So uh, three, two, one. Before they were gone, did they think, hey, who will miss me? I struggled to work hard, work up the press for so long and try to stay strong. But hey, will you even miss me? I strive to be my own boss, be the man with no flaws. But with all my efforts, who will even miss me? Wonder why I'm such a recluse. Cause I'm afraid of being influenced by other people while I'm trying to do what I want to do. I made fun of one of the smartest dudes I've ever known. Did tell him that on the low, he could have grown to be the man that changed the world all on his own. He felt a peer pressure a lot, and I made fun of him because he was abstract. I wish I could have told him that he was talented before he died in that car crash. 
and I can tell you more, but I made this beat too short, and this makes me feel like I contribute to what I hate, so I ignore this portion of my life, makes me feel like I'm a bully, and so I'm insecure, that if I died like he did, would you even miss me, cause I'm not really sure. Yeah. But if I die and move on Hey, will you miss me? I've seen a couple lives lost And I wonder before they were gone Did they think, hey, who will miss me? I struggle to work hard Become depressed for so long And try to stay strong But hey, will you even miss me? I strive to be my own boss Be the man with no flaws But with all these efforts Will you even miss me? Seventh grade, one of my friends' brothers passed away. All because of a game, he let himself hang on the playground. Body swaying left and right, the clothes were part down. I couldn't fathom how he felt that night. I believe he wanted to go to heaven, and I don't know if it was peer pressure or not. But I know that his family was affected. We were acquainted, never best friends, but I know that he was missed. And I've seen other deaths, and I know it's a hit on the hearts who have to accept the loss. My point is, I know I'm not the only one that's ever seen this A person dying and we still crying Wishing that we could have fixed any tension that was between us Or got to know that person before they die for whatever reason But I see people, even me included Spending life, misusing our time Like we can't die quick And I'm only 18 But I can't spend the rest of my life trying to avoid this Like other human beings So I'ma live my life And if I die, I don't care if you even miss me Hey, everybody hear that? Yep. All right. Yep. What do you guys? What do you guys think of Mr. Manny Mackins? Honestly, we actually reviewed a Manny Mackins project before. Mm-hmm. So this is a vast improvement from that because I felt his mm-hmm. production has gotten a lot better since then. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't even. I don't know if it's produced by him. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Is it? It does because it, it does sound similar to the style he usually puts out. Of production, mm-hmm. you can. I you think can, he did produce it. Yeah, you can. You can hear the LP influences in his pr- production. I was just gonna say this had M- LP influences all over the place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all heard it right out. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I, I like the beat uh, personally. I, I thought it was dope, and I couldn't really tell. Uh, maybe from uh, you know what I heard, I couldn't tell if that was beatbox or if that was uh, you know some other kind of digital beat that he put together. But I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool there. Uh, and his lyrics, um, I could definitely hear some pain, uh, you know, in his lyrics. Uh, you know, I, I could definitely hear you know maybe some personal struggles, personal pain, uh, you know, pain with other family members or friends, people who obviously passed away. Uh, uh, I could I could definitely hear that uh, you know throughout the song all the way really all the way to his to his last line so yeah so I, I thought it was I thought it was good overall there was some clunky spots here and there but it's nothing that you know he can't he couldn't clean up uh, you know in some post production uh, but overall compared to yeah the last time and the first time that we reviewed him I definitely think is definitely uh, you know ten steps uh, ten steps better than last so yeah yeah well I mean just to add on to that I mean, not even to add on but just agreeing with you guys it's like a, a definitely a vast improvement from the first time we listened to one of his his tracks like uh just technically i guess the sound the audio the production you know everything just sounds a lot better it sounds a lot more clear for one i mean there's still like i think there's still things that he can do to, to get better there's always things he could do to get better but uh yeah yeah i agree with you guys yeah I fucks with how dark the track was. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have I have to give Manny credit. He improved big time with this track. I love the dark beat to this song. This yeah. this 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 was fucking dope all around. Good job, Manny. I'm proud of you, kid. Yeah, I agree with everyone here. Yeah, I do. I am actually anticipating his his next mixtape because last one I wasn't feeling at all, and this was this was actually a pretty dope song. Good job, Manny. Martin yeah. Mackins, February. 14th. Travel February 14th. Yeah, we'll definitely be checking February 14th. We can't wait. Yeah, might That's even cool. have to get him on the show. 
Yeah, that would be dope. That would be dope. I think it would be cool. I mean, we've reviewed him twice. Might as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's see if we can make that happen. And then, uh, yeah, so thank you very much. What? I have a question. Was that bong water that I heard? <laughs> what? <laughs> Was that a bubbling bong in there? Uh, Smith? Playback. <laughs> no, that ain't me, bro. No, not me. Right nope, now. not me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I mean, I swear, I swear for like, it was like the longest bong hit that I heard. It was just a whole bunch of blah, 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 blah. And I didn't know if that was, I didn't know if that was like Manny. I didn't know if that was Sean Smith at the birthday party. I didn't know what that was. So, okay. If nobody I'll leave, else heard I'll leave it, it, I'll leave it to your imagination, I guess. I was going to say, if nobody else heard it, then maybe I'm telling myself something. Maybe I need to go figure out what I need to do yeah, after. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'll leave it to your imagination. Right. All right, cool. Well, Will You Miss Me by Manny Mackins. Uh, We checked you again, sir. Uh, So it's back on you to drop some more dope music. Uh, And yeah, we're going to try to get this collab put together sometimes. Now, uh, going from his album, which was not close to the worst, to some of the worst albums of 2017. So Hip Hop Amino Review Team, I know y'all sent that topic over. So yeah, just go ahead and why don't y'all go ahead and jump this one off and talk about some of the worst albums and, and we'll jump in. This, the music that was bad this year was really, really bad. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Lil Yachty. Mm. Lil Bo. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Little Pump, which I I thought was the worst. I don't understand the appeal at all. Even with Little people Pump, that if even with people that like listen to him on our on our unironically, like it makes no sense to me. Like it just mind numbingly, like derivative and repetitive. It's painful. That's My weird. homies bump Little Pump all the time. I've really I don't listen to Little Pump, but I really fucks with the beats on that project. Like I right. thought they were tough. Here's the yeah. problem, though. Here's the problem, though. I didn't mean uh-huh. to interrupt you, Smith, but here's the problem, though. It's We keep supporting these motherfuckers like Pump and fucking Jake Paul and those fucking idiots oh, that think they can yeah. rap. Jake, Paul, they don't, they don't make numbers, though, if, if, to be honest. I don't think this... I think this is a come-and-go thing, to be honest. I'm hoping it's a come-and-go thing because this is... This shit, is. this shit is driving me fucking crazy. Yeah, this Yachty's, fucking already going, Yachty's already <laughs> going downhill anyways. Like he has, he's he peaked with uh, the broccoli song, and it's been down. That's it. Yep. That's, and that's only motion shit. Oh, yeah, that my was God. that was trash. That was yeah. pretty horrible. No, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I was. I was gonna say that, and I mean, like the crazy thing about him is he had such a big buzz and a big hype going on that you would think he would have something going on on that album, but it was just a complete dud. Every track was terrible. I mean, like if you can if you can mix it up between a woodwind instrument and like, I don't know what cello. You, yeah, I can't. I don't know what it ch- <laughs> tell you. Even. Like that's he's that lyrically inept. Wow. Or fucking retarded. That's. I, I wouldn't go that far too. <laughs> absolutely horrible. Amigos uh, culture is trash. No, 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 no. I disagree with you heavily there. It's trash. I don't. No, yeah, that shit trash, bro. Yeah. I do wow. not agree with y'all. I no, nah, I got I got mad homies that bump all the shit that comes out. And Same. That, that is fucking the culture album. No, <laughs> couldn't because at least most of the time, at least I could get down with the beats on these projects. But I couldn't even do that on culture. Like I really, I, I hate that shit. Like fuck out of here with that. And that Mac <laughs> Lamore shit, Gemini. You ain't like oh, it. Yeah. I agree with you with that one. Here's Culture. the thing, yeah, but like, there's two projects I didn't, I fucking hated this year. The fucking Teenage Emotions, Little Yachty, and the fucking Ugly God tape. What the fuck is yeah, that I'm shit? Sleeping on Ugly God, man. How could I y'all mean, do Ugly God like that? I mean, he already got something wrong with his name, Ugly God. Like, that don't even go together. Come on, my man. What is he, he fuck boy, the- Ugly God? It's Oxymoron, man. It's, it's- deep. No, what I, oxymoron? I, I, it's, 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 it's moronic more than Oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel like I feel like that's half his listeners. Nah, I I just couldn't. I could. Uh, uh-uh, nah. But what about yeah. What about Bob's Ether? Oh God, that was not horrible, but I was not feeling. Nah, it, it was pretty bad though. 
Wally's album now. Yeah, I stopped checking for Wally album? for a long time. <laughs> Especially after like he came back with the album about nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I don't understand what made him make this album besides the trend of dance hall songs in the early 2017 yeah. and 20 late 2016. All these people just need to stop making music to be honest. French exactly. Montana's album Jungle Rules. I, I, didn't, I, didn't I, know. It. I mean, I don't even know. I mean, the, the the thing is this, man. It's it's it makes me sad because you know, we we have people like uh like LL Cool J saying, you know, that that you know you shouldn't dog people for the style of rap that they do, but sometimes that's just it. You know, I don't I don't care how you deliver the song, you know, as long as I can understand the song and as long as it actually makes sense. Uh, I don't know. It's just it's just like it just seems like there's such a culture, if you will, of uh, of glorifying garbage. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're glorifying, you know, just just I don't know, just like Xanax overdoses. Like it's just. That's what it's all about, and, I, and it just we, it doesn't I, appeal. Why do I, we keep supporting it then? If it's garbage, so, why do I we keep supporting it? I think it's okay. To, <laughs> I think it's okay to critique them if you don't make it personal. Yeah, I, I know, yeah. I know. Roll Tide has no filter when it comes to that kind of stuff. When he, come on, man. Uh, I, but if you take it personal, I think that's where like you can draw the line. Because from there it just doesn't make it just seems like you're being a hater. Yeah. But if you I like personally... critique, if you critique the art, then it's I think it's fine. I personally don't support all the trap music that comes out because I feel like it hurts the black communities mm. because all it does is it just promotes negative stuff out of those communities. Like it doesn't talk about anything good. But people That's want that I in with hip hop altogether. Like people want that in not does, crap. It doesn't yeah, help but though that people are dying though from overdoses. It doesn't help. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like this shit, like the because a lot of other hip hop, like Kendrick and shit, like you'll hear the bad and the good, and like you'll hear mm-hmm. the reasoning for things and shit. But mm-hmm. then, like if you're going, if you're like listening to people like Future and shit, there's no bad side in their music. Like they're the it's all like it's it's they talking about all these drugs and everything and, and they ain't talking happy. about no consequences to this. This right. has been going on yeah. since the night. Jay Z said this kind of stuff. Like Biggie's been talking about dealing all these <laughs> negative stereotypes <laughs> yeah, about. But, yeah, but they. What's so different now like, about future doing? Just because, because the they, music they ain't, bad? they ain't discussing any consequences or anything. Like they don't have anything positive in their shit. They right, glorified like, the ni- in that in the nineties also. They right. have no conscience though what they do though either. You know what I mean? They have yeah. no conscience. Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, you you definitely I think you definitely hit it on the head right there. Cause yeah, really the question is, yeah, why are we still supporting this stuff if we all think if we all believed it or you know, if a, a majority of people, you know, think it's not amazing, it's not good, it's not, you know, worthy of the praise that it's getting. And yeah, and it's one of those things, man. Uh, you know, these rappers talk about all the stuff, you know, and, and, you know, I know they're in a lot of cases, they're talking about their own life story or whatever they have going on in their life at the moment. But but it's like there's no there's no other side to it. There's no there's no conscious. There's no you know, there's no uh, uh, you know, I'm doing this and this is how this is how it makes me feel as a person. It's more like, you know, I'm just doing Xanax to make me feel good about or, or you know, make me make me get over my you know whatever depression issues. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just like there's no, there's no flesh. You know what I'm saying? There's no carne. You know, there's no meat to it, uh, and that's what I feel like. But I, you know, I may be I, wrong. I think this drug culture. I sh- I don't think it's heavily in like with hip hop. Like drug culture has existed in music in general it's since yeah for a long time. So I don't understand how. I don't like, think. I don't think it was as bad as it is now, though. No, it was much worse in the '60s. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, yeah with yeah, LSD, with the, with acid, the and doing, all kind of stuff. Yeah, with the hippies doing L- LSD and stuff. Yeah, that, like all that. went away, though. But, but they weren't like, singing about that, though, were they? Or were they? It wasn't as glorified as yeah. like the later. Later, you had the anti-drug from Reagan, Reagan, mm-hmm. like Reagan's rule. Uh, yeah, Reagan's just say no. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing, though. I'm getting a little personal here, but we, I live in this, I live in Boston. And we have the highest rate of opioid overdoses in the country right now 
it, it's just it's just sad to see all these overdoses happening like in front of your eyes. It's just sad to see all these families being broken up by all this bullshit that's going on around now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's definitely we, true. We, we took this album discussion way too deep. I was gonna say, I was gonna say. So now, so now we get back to. Uh, now we get back to some of those worst albums this year, and so so and and I mean that's that's really a part of it, you know. I think I think the uh, the animosity that we have towards some of these rappers right now, because I mean, you know, it, in my opinion, like I would never want to hear a Lil Pump song because I think his style is garbage and he is garbage. But you know, he's out there. But I I think it's just a lot of people. You know, with a certain animosity to a lot of these rappers, and some of it, some of it has basis, some of it not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but uh, you know, Trippy Red, for instance, a love letter to you too. Like, why is he? That, rated? that was bad. I mean, well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, why is he rated better than the Hobson album that y'all just reviewed <laughs> on your show, or why is he rated better than Dave Each? Davies and, and DJ Holiday's Karma. Like, what what's making Trippy Red's album better than any of these, or, or anybody else's album for that matter? Trippy Red. Uh, I don't think we ever reviewed his music, but like, are you talking about like people are like giving him more acclaim? <clears throat> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's some of these albums that are horrible, but some, yeah. you know, they they are they are doing a lot better. They're rated a lot better. Than some other albums that should have got more love, you know. Yeah, what I'm saying? He's so saying he's just an example. Oh, yeah, like they're getting, they're getting general, like. Okay. He's saying in general, like uh, a lot of his music, like Future and shit, it gets a lot more praise and there's a lot more spotlight shined onto it than a uh, more maybe not, not exactly underground, but less less popular it's stuff beautiful. like Hobson and Davies, like he was talking about. Like, stuff like that, that's like, they're trying to make good quality music. Like, Dave East makes good quality music. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, it just, it doesn't get, like, like, critics ain't rating it as high as, like, this other shit out here. People aren't paying attention to it I as much. Th- like, that's what he's saying. I think because, uh, I don't, I like, you can hear Trippy Red, and right now, I can't say anyone that does that, that... Yelping, uh, minuscule crooning, like uh-huh. uh, maybe a little Uzi Vert. I think uh-huh. whatever's new to a critic, they automatically like give it a claim. Like, yeah, whatever's new and hip. Because Davies, he's not doing anything new. He's he's pretty much giving a story, like in his own way, of course. Mm-hmm. But it's nothing like like nothing like we haven't heard. Yeah. That's true. So, who is the who has the wor- who had the worst album of the year? Well, uh, I'd, I'd say uh, Nav with Nav and Metro Boomin with Perfect Timing. Okay, that is teenage because, emotions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, teenage emotions, bro. Shit, <laughs> yeah. trash. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I got, it, I got to agree with that one. Yeah. I can listen to a Lil Pump album and laugh, but the Nav album, it uh-huh. just hurt me because it was it came just, straight out the dumpster. No, it just, it was so boring and it hurt. It just killed a bunch of brain cells, I think, when I was listening to it because I, it was just nothing going on. Yeah. It's like I, it's like what I said the last podcast I was in. They said, I said before, like, these producers say they don't even try. They, all the beats sound all the same to me. They don't even try. Come on, Metro Boom and a dope ass producer, though. You gotta admit that. No. (laughs) Come on, bro. He might not be producing for the right people all the time, but his beats are fire. I mean, bro. think of it like this, Roll Tide. When you listen to Boom Bap, you've listened to so much Boom Bap albums <laughs> that you can tell the differences between those kind of songs. I'm pretty sure if you've listened to a lot of trap music, you would know, like, Metro Boomin is probably one of the more di- diverse producers in that in the game. In terms of trap music or popular music, I understand music. he's I understand he's that, but I had to listen to Metro Boomin's like beats for the last like six years, and it drove me nuts. That's funny. That's funny. Wait, and that's funny you said. So I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask another question about somebody else then. X. Well, I can't even say dude name. X Triple X Temptations, whatever his name is. <laughs> Tentacles. <laughs> yeah. X. Tentacion. Tentacion. 
Extent, ex, extension. Extension. That's really what his name should be, but the dude can't spell. So his album seventeen. Is it is it one of the better better albums or is it one of the worst albums? No, it's it's trash. It's I don't really trash. have an opinion about it. I'm really into emo it. rap. I actually enjoy it, quite a bit of emo rap, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I, I actually don't have an opinion on the Triple X album. It's, I'm I really agree. indifferent towards it. He's I don't think he he's lyrical enough to have in depth conversations about the things he's talking about. <laughs> I think you're right. I'm just Honestly. not a fan of X period. Yeah, yeah. I don't I do think I do think he has time to grow and his I don't think it, this is it for him. He's actually growing, but the way with his legal situation, I don't know how, how far he's gonna get. Right. He'll be in jail for a long time. Is it, did he know. just get like new charges dropped on him? Like today yeah, or something? yeah, something about his ex or whatever. Oh, he said seven new charges. Yeah, Damn. he deserves to go to jail though. Yeah, that's 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 his fault. That's his fault right there. Uh, okay, so how about this? How about this question then? So since we're on the worst albums of the year. Uh, and you know, I, I know that y'all like y'all like a wide range of, of hip hop. So as far as the uh, maybe not old heads, but as far as the veteran rappers that we've respected, you know, for years and years, which one of those guys dropped the worst album of the year? Because we had Big Boy drop one, we had Jay Z, obviously. Uh, you know, uh, obviously we had Logic drop an album, and he hasn't been around as long as some of those guys. We had Kendrick, you know, we had we had a lot of guys drop rap this year. Uh, that we had are one drop today too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I ain't saying say his name, but if if we talking about veteran rappers that are still yeah. dropping today, yeah, I'm gonna have to say. I didn't hear the big boy joint, to be honest, but I did hear a lot of the other uh, albums that came out by veteran rappers. I would have to say the worst one is the Eminem one. If- I have to, I have to wholeheartedly di- like agree with him. Mm-hmm. Like, it's honestly, I'm, I'm gonna leave it later. I got a lot to say about. Yeah, this we'll album. talk we about, about it right now. now. Yeah, we could just say we, we talk, right yeah, into we, it. We just right. go into that, and and the thing is, you know, we, we our topic, our next topic, was going to be about Emma Long, Emma Long, Eminem's, Emma Long. <laughs> <laughs> Eminem's new song and track list, uh, and if he's afraid to give us a pure hip hop album, but it just so happened that today uh, uh, is the day that he dropped this revival album, so. Yeah, man. Uh, if y'all thought he was the trashiest one today, so just well, just give us your thoughts on well, that. Well, I tell you, before we jump into that. When he dropped the first track, uh, what was it "Walk on Water" with Beyonce? What was you guys' first thoughts on that? I was wow. pretty mad to it. I was pretty like meh to it. I didn't think it was anything special. I honestly, it reminded me of uh, of like the lighter song he did with Bruno Mars. Mm-hmm. Lighters, yeah, lighters. Yeah, I didn't like that one. Pretty, mo- I didn't like that one. So I was pretty, I was pretty indifferent. Not indifferent, but I was pretty mad to it. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. When I first heard "Walk on Water," I'm like, "Here we go again. This is gonna be Marshmello's LP2 all over yep. again. Here comes the pop crap." You're just the Eminem. hater, DJ. Eminem will never learn because he had all this time to figure out what he was gonna do, but he right. never learned. Oh man! All right, I thought "Walk on Water." I thought it was dope for what it was. It definitely did not have any replay, replay value for me, though. Right. I never yeah. went back to it. It was dope for what it was, though. Yeah, that was that was my my thoughts. I, I thought it was actually, I thought it was good. But you know, just like you said, I'm not gonna find myself bumping down the street listening nah. to that song, nah, you know, over and over again. You know what I'm right. saying? So right. it was good. It sent the message that it needed to send. But uh, yeah, it's like a one one and done uh, for me for that one. What do, what do you think, Jay, after listening to man, this whole album in the water, too? The whole... Well, first off, Walk on Water, yeah. man. I, I thought... I thought it was garbage. I mean, it didn't have any replay value me. Of course, I did get the, the message or, you know, the content was there. But it just didn't sound good. I wasn't going to play this again. Mm-hmm. You know, then I seen the track list come out. Then it was like I see Pink and I see all these other people... Oh yeah, you know oh, all these God. other pop stars, Alicia Keys, Kehlani. You know, all, all I these don't folks. understand why he's still doing this. Yeah, you think you think three albums in and like seven years later, 
you think of maybe I should do something different, but no, you know it. it Gotta get the pop stars. It all goes back to when he lost his notepad because I think you know I, you remember back when he lost his notepad, whenever that was a few years ago. Uh, I think he had some good stuff written down, but but he forgot it all. <laughs> <laughs> Here's all the right. thing, though. Uh-oh. In my opinion, here's my opinion, though. Why would you add all these unnecessary pop artists right. like Pink and Ed Sheeran and yeah. use your shady artists like West Side Gun and Conway and your new signy Boogie? Where is exactly. he at? Yeah. Exactly. I, I didn't fuck with any of these features. They were all fucking trash. Mm-hmm. At this point, I think it's an ego problem with them. I don't think he wants to get outshined on a track. Like the rapper he has on his album He's not even rapping. He's doing a hook and a bridge. Right, right. Like, mm-hmm. like I, this is the first time I have confirmed that Eminem, like, he really does not want any other rapper outshining him on the track. I just uh, feel, I just feel bad for West Side Gun and Conway and Boogie. They're not getting shady shine on this album because he is too egotistical to put any good artists on his album, any good rappers on his album. I think that's sad. I think that's just a waste of time. So I was so, hoping, uh-huh. I was hoping for another Kendrick feature, like one he did on his last album, because uh-huh. I really loved Love Game. I was really hoping Kendrick would come back. I was disappointed as soon as that track list dropped. I was thinking I was gonna at least get like a Royce feature, but nope. Exactly, or a Bad Mits Evil song. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, so, do you guys think M has? Uh, aside from his egotistical issues, do you think he has too many yes men in the studio with I him? I don't think he has enough ears in the studio, actually. Oh, uh, okay. He has so the same. Think- the problem is, he has the same people he's always had. And also, yeah. also, he's not. He said in the past before that he's not listening to critics. Critics on the song on a, on a on on fire or something off of recovery. Mm. And he was on like on fire was dope. Yeah, on fire. He where he's talking about critics. And they don't know anything, and I feel like he, at this point he has to listen to the critics. He has to, yeah, yeah. He definitely does. And he if really he was does. listening to if he was listening to the critics, and how did Ed Sheeran and Pink get on this album in the first? No, place? And I, I never said he was. I'm saying he needs to. Also, yeah, yeah now he needs to. I mean, now because even his fans are turning on him, man. Look at legs. Look at Smith. Smith, he's like <laughs> he's a huge fan. Poor of Smith, man. he's getting left in the dust from these features, man. Oh my god, I know, bro. I'm, I'm really he disappointed. Help bro. this poor child. I fucking my. Oh, I bet you wanted to cancel your Apple Music after that, didn't you? Oh my god, I don't even. <laughs> I was, so, bro. I this is the first Eminem album I didn't like. Encore. No, I like Encore. Oh my god. Really? Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, I know. I know not many first people do. And... I like it though. <laughs> this is the first album by Eminem I don't like. This man really disappointed me. Don't go like, into detail. We'll save that. I, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm not going to go into too much. But um <laughs> I I cuz I you know, M announced another album and he's one of the artists that I usually like don't worry about. That I'm usually like, all right, he's going to definitely drop something I fuck with. Like I'm 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 excited for this. This is the first time he's disappointed me. Since this has like, come out today, I'm just going to say these are our first impressions of the album. Who knows? Yes. Next week we yeah. might love him. We might love the album. We might be bumping it. We might buy it. Well, I, I listened to the leak, to be honest, so I heard it a day early. Here's my two cents. Like, I was worried when this uh, an- uh, album was announced that he was going to make a new album. Like, oh, boy, was he going to do this time? Because I heard Marshall Mathers <laughs> LP, too, because that yeah. was a piece of shit. And... Uh, <laughs> And I, when I saw the track list, I'm like, oh my god, he never learns with these pop artists. I mean, we had to deal with the monster craze with Rihanna and that bullshit. Why don't you just use West Side Gun, Conway, Bookie, I don't know, D12 and something It's okay, like Rolls Chain. It's okay, it's okay. It, it, yeah. just, it just annoys me. This is abuse. I'm not using your signees. This is just abuse. I know. Yeah, this this, this is was... just abuse. It drives me crazy when a label don't use their artists on albums. It drives uh, me nuts. To be honest, I had hope for this album until the track list dropped, and then I was getting a little worried. 
But then you know the second single Untouchable dropped and I and I really fuck with that one. What? So I was oh, like, all right. That, so you I was like, all right, that, that's I was like, all right, I got hope for this again. I was like, I'm all good. And then the shit drops and uh nah. nah. Did anyone see the uh the fake second disc, supposed second disc? Oh my no, god. I didn't see it. That made my day and destroyed it at the same time. It had Redman, it had Slaughterhouse. You. We could tell that? by the you could tell it was fake though. Come on. But did anyone no, see the no, did anyone tell. see the uh the new and third fake track list? <laughs> There's a third? <laughs> yeah, there was a third. The album's already out. No, got, 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 no got I'm just saying this the one, second one, it, it was DJ Premier it was DJ Premier, it was Apollo Brown, Jay Dill was supposed you to be know on that. that one's fake. I know what fake I'm yeah, like. No, imagine that. No, someone, someone. I was at work, right? Someone hits me with that second track list, that disc two shit, mm-hmm. and they said King Crooked posted it. So you know, I go, I go tell one of my coworkers that fucks with him. I'm like, yo, like look at this track list. I'm like, it got Red Man, it got Fifty Cent, it got J Cole, it got Royce. Yo. I was like, yo, I'm excited for this shit again. Uh. And then later that day, I found out it was a fake track list because King Crooked posted fake. He posted the track list and he had fake news on it. And I was like, ah, like that shit. It made my day and destroyed it all at the same time. We have a reason why he did that. No, he didn't post it in the first. I think someone like photoshopped his Twitter into the picture or some Mm. shit because uh, it made the picture I saw made it look like King Crooked posted the disc 2 track list apparently he never did though and so everyone was retweeting the shit so then he had to make an actual post with the track list that said fake news because he never posted it in the first place wow honestly this is uh, this album it's it's probably his worst since Encore it's probably the worst of this leg of his career with this the four albums he released with Relapse being my personal favorite of the four it's like I'm not even a fan of Eminem anymore to be honest after his last album but this one just it drew the nail in the coffin for me wow yeah so no, but no pun intended yeah exactly so I have a question for you then I have a question cause, cause y'all were asking why is Eminem you know why is Eminem still uh, you know, adding all these pop artists stuff like that. So, I mean, is is he at the point where he's going sort of senile and he's scared that he's not going to sell records? Is that why he's putting all these people with names on his record? You know, what I'm saying like, why, why, what, what is what is Eminem's mind state, mind frame? Because the last thing we heard him, or really the first thing we heard him, you know, on uh, in a long time was when he dropped the storm uh, on uh, that cipher on the BET Hip Hop Award. So, so you know, he went from that. To uh, you know this uh, the pre-launch uh, uh, walk on water and then of course now he's launched this so like is he is, is Eminem is Eminem on his last leg guys that's yes. what I'm trying to ask is it over is is yes. he soon just gonna be sitting you know in the studio writing and helping with production and not even rapping anymore like I honestly think at this point he should retire I if the next album is even like worse. Or even at the same level as this one, then I think it just ruins his le- legacy forever. Mm-hmm. Going if back gonna... at that point, he that he would have more bad albums than good ones, and he he didn't like he get the Lil Wayne fate. If he uh, if he can come back with something that's as good or better than Marshall Mathers LP two, then I'ma say stay in the game. Otherwise, if, if he can't do that, retire. If he's still selling like a lot, I doubt he's gonna change. Like here's here's my two cents. Going back to Marshall Mathers LP two, I explain how Monster got so successful. It's because Rihanna was on it, not because Eminem was on it. It's because Rihanna was on it, and Rihanna was huge during that time. She made like probably one of the best albums of 2013 at that time, and she made an album in 2013. If she did something, it was huge. This doubled this doubled her popularity to the to the roof. Like when she added to the when he's adding like Ed Sheeran, X Ambassadors, and Pink to this, you can tell he's like, oh no, he's he's going all he's gonna lose his like sanity, he's gonna lose his mentality. Like I'm just yeah. not gonna be able mentally ready to make any more records if I'm just gonna make any more like records with these pop artists because yeah. I'm not I'm used to I, doing this. 
I'm not I'm not used to Eminem with pop artists. I'm just used to Eminem saying, Oh, fuck your mother, fuck your dad, oh I'm gonna kill your sister, I'm gonna kill I'm gonna put him in the trunk. That's what I'm used to Eminem. That's I mean, he did say he was putting Melania Trump in the trunk of his car or whatever. That was so yeah. ham fisted. Like yeah. Yeah, I don't. I'm just, I I'm, just I'm just, I'm just, I'm just used to <laughs> missing violent, crazy, vertical Eminem. Not this political <laughs> bullshit pop artist like Eminem. Right. No, like I don't. So you that don't was like much. I mean, like it, it was so ham fisted, like Midnight said. That rap was not even necessary Come at on, all. Untu- no, Untouchable was necessary. That what joint was necessary. Like, the you content like, I have no problem with is just the delivery and his and like the production is the what... content is something all rappers should be speaking on right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But with that said, sure. the content of that versus, say, Jordan Lucas. Con- uh, content in his uh, I'm Not Racist track that dropped like what maybe Ooh, pretty much around the same dope. time you know those two right there I, I actually mm-hmm. think well this is just my opinion I think Joyner probably tackled it the best of the year probably yeah, yeah oh in this situation you know, just yeah. those two, yeah. especially with the I'm Not Racist song. Oh, not, yeah. no not in the year maybe Story of OJ is up there year no, nah, nah, yeah, the dope. King Crooked's album tackled these issues the best this year. With the MAGA continues and what his storyline was on that one, yeah. I haven't listened to it completely, mm-hmm. but it's it is up there. If I had to add anything, and the Scarface album does a pretty good job at tackling that's a, a lot of these issues. That's, that's a right. B sides. Scar Scarface. It's still though, cool. it might be a B sides. <laughs> it still tackles the issues though. It's still new music. But well, what about but what about like Joey Badass's album All American Badass? Oh, that was that dope. did a good that job a too. Album. Oh, I completely forgot Think about. Think about that. he went from a transition of oh I'm just gonna be walking the streets of New York to this oh just fuck Donald Trump and just be all political and nonsense. Which is okay. it's just we just see a more trend of like we're saying our voices See, loud man, again. Sounds like you don't like political hip hop. I'm just saying that we're just growing our voices against this dark age of politics is, right now. This is the thing, though, man. This, this is what I gotta say. Um, and like, if you look back at uh, the uh, late '80s and early '90s, uh, you know, really when Public Enemy and NWA and all those guys Ice were Cube. really, yeah, Nice Cube. You know, they really, they really started jumping off. I, like, I don't want to be rude, but. Um, I kind of have to go. I'm really sorry about this. No, nah, no, nah, you can't go, nah, Sean. You can't go. <laughs> You're trapped. <laughs> it's all right. If you gotta go, you gotta go. I'm just okay. saying, we're, we're seeing more of a more upward voice. Yeah. Let me you look. Know, can I get like? Can I get like? Can I get my little exit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right now we're just gonna go, go ahead and say adios <laughs> to you, uh, Sean. Uh, go yeah, ahead. Go I'm really ahead. sorry, guys, but I, I kind of gotta go. It is my. It's it's is my friend's twenty first birthday. Happy oh birthday. yeah, so you got you got to turn go up. Ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, shout him out, actually, shout out everything. He's actually need. looking at me so angry. Hey, what's his name? <laughs> his name is uh, Omar. Omar, happy birthday to you, homie. <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow you remember tonight. All right, peace, guys. <laughs> too much money on them strippers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, see y'all, I'll see y'all later. I'll try to. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Right, for have a good man. one. All right, cool. Well, that's sad that he had to drop, but uh, this is what I want to say. Um, you know, it, back in back in those days, back in the late '80s, early '90s, you know, uh, I guess rappers uh, and the rise of the rap game then uh, was all really due to the oppression that the rappers felt. Uh, you know, and they actually started speaking their voice, speaking their mind. You know, fuck the police. Uh, you know, uh, uh, all that stuff. You know, what I'm saying so so. Uh, obviously, there was other kinds of rap at the time, but that is, you know, what made it and what turned it into, you know, the amazing beast that it is right now. So I agree with the 100 percent. But yeah. nowadays, this just increased by like hundreds fold now with yeah. with Donald Trump being our president now. Now no it's just spoken about enough. Now we're seeing more of a voice yeah. from these artists than we've seen in the late 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be honest, I don't think political hip hop is done enough nowadays. I think we yes. need more. Yeah. We need, even we more need, than what we're we need more immortal techniques and we need more public enemies. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, we we need more people. And, you know, this probably goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, we need more people actually saying something in their music. You know what I'm saying? Give us something because, you know, that's how we learn. That's how we grow as a people. For all of us people who aren't as good enough, you know, good enough to be rappers. You know what I'm saying? We want to get some substance, you know, some real meat, uh, you know, from your music uh, and take it with us. You know, if we're if we're just in our everyday life or if we're going to protest, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So. And I mean, the crazy thing you say that is there is a lot of rappers out there with with substance. But it's yeah. like we were talking about earlier. Why are these cats that are talking about all the drug use? Why are they getting the bigger name, the more uh, because I, we're I guess publicity because you know? we're at a, we're at a divided road right now in the hip hop genre right now. We're at a divided road right now. One side, you got the political rappers saying their feelings about the politics today, and you got these other rappers talking about Zanny and popping pills and old Dean. It's just, it's just if you if you like walking down that path and you see these two paths, you don't know which path you're gonna take. Yeah, it, it's just it's just depending what you see in your own personal view at the time. Hip hop's become too mainstream by this point. Exactly, it's been like. It's under the control of white America by this point. It's no longer like in the hands of the creators of the genre. Yeah. All well, creators need to express their voices of their opinions and screech yeah, it. Yeah, but yell it loud. The problem is the spotlight's not getting shined on them. Like I doubt that many people know about the new King Crooked album. I mm-hmm. doubt that a lot of people know about Scarface. Is it like a lot of people didn't even know Scarface? Dropped exactly, out. but they yeah. only know about political hip hop now because of the Eminem BET cipher yeah. and all the controversy that caused at the day after it right. came on. Mm-hmm. It's important that people like Eminem speak on these topics too, though, because since he is more popular and has a bigger platform. But look what he did, though, in 2004. He, he made White America. Did anybody see the what, music video for White America? Uh-uh. But, but still, it was all like like political pro- pro- propaganda with the military, a mm-hmm. cartoon cut you're talking about the Mosh music What's, video in 2004. It's just, just to me, like, we just need to set our voices aloud. You know what I mean? We're in a divided time right now. Yeah. It's definitely true, and the, and the, and the other thing that I'll say to your, you know, two sides of the street, uh, you know, uh, 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 mentioned there, was like you also have, you know, a side of the street where there are there are guys saying, you know, uh, yeah, we're done with this mumble rap, you know, you guys actually need to actually rap rap type of thing, and then they get looked at as old heads, you know, what I'm saying they they get looked at as people who are stuck in their ways to want to want to welcome change to rap so you know you have there's another segment of people you know that that people aren't you know aren't even rocking with because as soon as somebody says no no we need to talk about this we need to talk about what's going on in society blah 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 they're like they're like no we don't want to listen to you because nobody wants to hear that everybody wants to you know listen to this oh let's go out and have fun music let's go out and and uh you know pop some pills music you know instead of instead of actually listening to something that you're going to get some substance out of so yeah so there's a lot of lot of everything going on with rap right now and and the question i had about eminem uh, at the end i guess of the eminem discussion was um going forward you know going forward when eminem says you know i'm about to drop another uh album you know after after this uh you know the next album coming up will you have enough trust and or faith in eminem to go ahead and cop that album day one or are you going to wait until you hear a I'm couple of days worth of of course you'll pre-order it, Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it after, depends. He could drop the worst album in the world. I'm still supporting them. Right, I know. I'm just saying it depends what he's trying to do, though. That's the thing. With yeah. this, I'm not even going to pick this up. By the looks of this, why, by the looks <laughs> of this, it's just this is not going to be good. Yeah. Revival's not going to be good. I'm just afraid if he I makes another it, album, man. I'm just afraid if he makes another album like this, He's going to keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going until he says, I'm not doing this anymore and hangs up the mic. I'm just afraid he's going to go back to this trend of like, oh, I'm going to express my political views. Here's why I think he could bounce back, though. Here's why I think he could bounce back. Mm -hmm. If you look at Jay-Z, Jay-Z dropped Magna Carta Holy Grail. That album was trash. Mm -hmm. But then he comes back 
his next album, 444, amazing. So I feel like M has the ability to do the same shit. I understand he has the ability to do. I understand. Willie, though. But look how many years between time that Magna Carta Holy Grail was released and 444. That's a four-year gap. That's the same amount of time that Eminem had. That's the same amount of time that Eminem had to make this album, and he failed to take that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this this was like M's Magna Carta though. Like why like what if you give him another four years and he drops something dope? If he ever makes music again, that's the dope. That's that's the thing. If he ever makes music again. Well yeah, but we're just saying if he does like I believe does, he yeah. has the ability to drop it. Alright. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I, I think I think he has the ability to. I mean you, you, you look at I think I we know he has the ability to do it, but will he do it? I don't know. Just like, just like we were saying question. earlier, you know, will he do it? Just like we were saying earlier, though, you know, he has once again, you know, dropped these poppy, you know, uh, uh, super uh, uh, what popular artists uh, on his on his album when he really didn't have to do that. You know, he could have used somebody else. He could have used some up and comers. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but no, he did this. So after this album, I mean, you know, if if the if the uh, reviews for this album, you know, continually come back negative. You know his ne- next album. Will he decide? Hey, I need to change up the game. Look at it from a new angle. Or will we say? Will he just say I'm Eminem, so I'm gonna just put out what I want to put out? It's Which too early. It's too early to say at the moment right now. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, too yeah. early. It's first day. I I think it could happen <laughs> though. I think it could happen. I think if he really gets enough criticism for this, and maybe even if people in his circle tell him certain things. Yeah. Then I, I think he could bounce back. I think he could come back and be like, "All right, I need to get Dre. I need to get Mr. Porter. I need to like he. I, I think he could come back and be like, "Yo, I need to put together like a solid team and make a real hip hop mm-hmm. album, mm-hmm. or maybe so, even Alchemist." Yeah, even just, Alchemist. Just get Rick Rubin out of there because yeah, his time is up. Nothing. His time's been up. Oh yeah, Rick Rubin did good on the last album, but he didn't do good on this one, so he mm-hmm. needs to go. No, man. No. Now the thing about this this album is, and I don't want to give too much away because I, I know you guys didn't review it, but that was only like four tracks I really kind of enjoyed, and and that's not really saying a whole lot. And yeah, for a nineteen track album. Yeah, for a nineteen track album, four out of nineteen, you know. And those tracks kind of it felt like he was comfortable in a a good comfort zone like he was actually having fun and he was by himself there was no pop pop artist or feature on it you know so which which so, songs were those man uh i mean i enjoy chloroseptic mm-hmm. framed offended and castle those were the four that i enjoyed and that's that's not saying a whole lot you know and i i think it was roll tide you were saying you like the the crazy Eminem who was killing people back in the day and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, that like that killer vibe he gives off, like yeah, the crazy, yeah. like crazy shit he says. That's yeah. the Eminem I miss. I don't know if he's just making like a kid-friendly version of himself, like to tone down himself <laughs> wow. because he's he's, yeah. getting, I mean, were... he's getting up almost into his fifties, I believe. He's almost yeah, getting true. up there. Yeah. Is he really? Dang. Yeah, yeah, he, he's up there, man. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, there was a couple instances on this album that that he actually it actually felt like he was going back to that style. So you know, it's kind of like back in the day when he used to have these crazy concept records. Kind of like uh, remember Murder She Wrote way back in the day? I forgot what year that came out. Maybe early two thousands, probably. <laughs> yeah, um, that was on Ti's album, right? That was, I think so. I'm, I'm trying to remember, yeah. but yeah, I mean, he has like a couple concept records on here so I'm wondering to myself what if Eminem put together a whole concept album I mean I know he he says he idolizes Master Ace Master Ace always does concept albums from start to finish what would an Eminem concept album sound like from start to finish Wow! without any of these uh, without any of these features without any of these pop stars what would that sound like that's what I, I would love to hear if he does the next album, if his head was on straight to even think about doing something like that. So, yeah, but that's what I got from it. <laughs> yeah, I liked, I liked just under half the album. 
which is I terrible. I didn't get a chance to listen to this yet, but when I get a chance, oh, this should be fun. In, in the review, yeah. I'll probably talk about which track exactly I enjoyed, but I yeah, enjoy we don't we don't want to we don't want to spoil much right now. Yeah, hit us yeah. hit us up in your review then, because we definitely want to peep that the yeah, first yeah, day yeah, drop no it. So. So yeah, so I mean personally, Walk on Water, Believe. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Walk on Water, um, Untouchable. Uh, I like both of those. Um, uh, I did like Home. Uh, I did like like Home with Alicia Keys, uh, and then I I just barely got to Heat, uh, track number fourteen. So I didn't get to those last few. But yeah, those were the ones that I did like. Um, uh, and I don't know. I mean, I, I just vibe with them the most. The rest of them were just like, okay, thanks Eminem. Next song, but I listened to them. I didn't skip. skip. You know what I'm saying? I didn't skip. I I, I like to listen to it all as oh, as good or as as cringeworthy as it is. Whatever it is, I, I'll listen to it. So and I tried to listen to this twice, but I I say I went to this and then I put uh, put in uh, or I started listening to Saturation Three, mm-hmm. Rockhampton Saturation Three, and I think I might have listened to that like four times in a row <laughs> before I even came back to Eminem's album, and I still couldn't get through it. Well, I, I don't know. like Saturation Three. But that's oh, that's man. that's for another day. Yeah, the that's only it. album I liked that dropped today was the new Scarface. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that that's Scarface. That's Scarface jams. So I'm a big da- I, I, I'm down with that one. So okay, so uh, getting off the Eminem thing, and we can't wait for the Eminem stance to come <laughs> for us on this discussion because I know it's going to happen. And please bring on the stands. Uh, uh, but Eminem, you know, was a rapper that can act. So my question for y'all is this sort of surprise question, if you will. Uh, uh, name the best rapper that was an actor as well, and then also that's not name Will Smith. Yeah, yeah, not not name Will Smith, right? Because he's a he's a layup. So best rapper actor, and then also what actor do you think would be a good rapper? Favorite act rap actor uh, has to be Nas because yeah. Belly. Oh, uh, shit. Is he? Yeah, okay. I'm at the. Ooh, this is between Ice Cube and 50 Cent. Mm. I'm uh, Ooh, I think I'm gonna have to go with Ice Cube, though. I'm going with Ice Cube. Okay. Jay, what you think, man? Man, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a screwball in here. Romney Malco. Romney Malco. Romney what's, Malco. What, what's his name? I know him. He played. He played in so many different movies. Um, he was in Forty Year Old Vir- Virgin. Yeah, that black dude. Yeah, yeah. he started out in a group called College Boys way back in the day, like in the mid nineties, early to mid nineties, I believe it was. Really? So he was a rapper that turned into an actor. Okay. You know, and they had like a few hits back in the day, but you know, of course, it wasn't on the scale as you know any of the other people that we we mentioned tonight. Mm-hmm. So. I'm going to throw him in because he had so many different diverse roles, you know, uh-huh. diverse movies, whether it be like a romantic movie, a comedy movie, uh, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I throw wow. him in. Okay. So I can even say T.I. too. But yeah. I was, I was looking at T.I. T.I. is in my, I would say he's definitely my, like my top eight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> rapper, actors. But I think what I'm going to have to say is, um, Man, Queen Latifah is up there too. But I'm going to say Ice Cube. Ice Cube. And, and the reason okay. why Ice Cube is because all we knew of Ice Cube before he, you know, acted was, man, hardcore rapper, you know what I'm saying? Gangster rapper, whatever, you know. He he hates life, you know what I'm saying? He hates the world. But then we saw that dude in Friday and he turned on the comedy. And it was like, oh. <laughs> He's not all brash and he's not all hard. You know, he actually has a funny soft side. Uh, he actually did pretty, you know, pretty darn good. And then, of course, he's rolled that into other movies. Uh, uh, you know, no matter no matter what you think of the whole quality of like, are we there yet or are we done yet? Uh, he still actually did a pretty good job to me. So, but dang, honorable mention: LL Cool J, Tupac, yeah. Ice T. I mean, shoot, he's been on Law and Order for years. So. I don't know. Fifty cent honorable mention. Fifty cent. Fifty yeah. cent. Yeah. Most deaf. I mean, there, there's a lot. Ludicrous. Yeah, I, how could I forget most deaf? Yeah. You know, I mean, there, there's a lot. There's a lot out there. Okay, so that being said, you know, what's what actor do you think 
could be a good rapper. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> that's yeah, what I was gonna definitely, say. Definitely, definitely. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, shoot, that's hmm. that's a great one right off. <sighs> wow. That's the only one I was able to think of. You know, I think Denzel. Not right now, Denzel, but like, <clears throat> but like, fifteen years ago, Denzel, or when you know when when he became Denzel and a household name. I could see Denzel being a good rapper and being an intellectual rapper. Interesting. Wow. You know, my head is like going towards Leonardo DiCaprio because I hear he's a hardcore hip hop head. Right. Even uh. What's that? Elijah Wood. Really? Elijah Wood, he's a hardcore hip hop head and you would not even know it. Uh, I don't see Frodo as a as a hip hop head. I <laughs> hey, I don't see him either, but you know, apparently he is. He's always on Sway in the Morning talking hip hop with him. So mm-hmm. interesting. Hmm. Yeah. You know who else? Johnny Depp. Just cause let me just tell you why Johnny Depp. Only because if you look at Johnny Depp's acting career, he has played dang near every possible version of role that you can imagine, except for actor, I believe, or rapper, sorry, I believe. So I think Johnny Depp, since he's a great character actor, could pull yes. off being a rapper because he'd drop it in and he'd be perfect. So mm. I don't know. That's Whatever. a good pick. Whatever. All right, guys. Well, uh, this is the time of the show. Where JQ's that uh, that George Michael careless whisper, uh, and uh, you know we tell people how to tap they love box. Yeah, so go ahead and imagine that because we're not playing it on the recording right now. But uh, yeah, so in the tap your love box segment, if you haven't heard it, uh, you know you just you just talk about random stuff and tell people to tap their love box, and that's when they hit the like button uh, on the show. Uh, so for instance, for instance. Uh, you know, if you feel like you're more Fruit Loops than Special K, tap your love box. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can jump in with whatever we random never, thing you got going on. You can talk about anything we talked about today or anything else going on in the world. Like, if you thought Star Wars The Last Jedi was dope, tap your love box because I'm tapping right now. So, yeah, whenever you want to go, just go. Jump in whenever you want to, guys. Hey, if you purchase the new Eminem album thinking you were copping that hot fire only to get another dud tap your love box <laughs> mm. wow Let's see. if you're pissed at the FCC for uh, repealing the net neutrality tap your love box yep everybody doing that right yeah. If you would love to hear a full-length Christmas album sung by sung entirely by DMX, tap your love box. <laughs> Man, <laughs> Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, come on! <laughs> <laughs> wow. If you if you want. To see if you want to go and bully Keaton Jones' mom for putting her son up to that rouse this week, tap your little box. <laughs> Y'all hear about that? Yeah, fuck Keaton Jones and his family. And his fam. Not cool at all. Not cool. Everybody. Not mm-hmm. cool. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. If you want to be a hype beast for Christmas and get all mm-hmm. the Yeezys and the Supreme clothes that you can, tap your little box. It's, it's funny because I don't even want shoes for Christmas. I'm just going to get like hip-hop CDs for Christmas. Nice. That's dope. That's dope. If you're the type of guy to get a piggyback ride from your woman to avoid messing up your new Yeezys in a puddle of water, <laughs> tap your little box. <laughs> oh, oh, <clears throat> if you spend your whole weekends polishing your Yeezys with a toothbrush and looking up how to buy a Supreme logo off of eBay, tap your little one. <laughs> that, must be, that must be one hectic week, weekend then. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. 
Fellas, y'all can jump in if you got anything. Let's see, let's see, let's see. If your girlfriend buys you booty pajamas, <laughs> what? tap your little box. What? Just, just imagine that, man. Just imagine your girl buying you some booty pajamas. Booty pajamas. <laughs> Is that like them old, them, the onesie with the ass out? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I'm looking at her crazy if she do that. I would, I would say, I would say, are you fucking out of your mind? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh Jesus. blink right now <laughs> if you're trying to wonder who the next black rapper or athlete to get caught up in the Kardashian curse is gonna be tap your lip box Sorry. <laughs> my money's on ball oh man on the ball yeah yeah he, he's, he's about to get snatched up man even though he does have a nice looking woman she kind of looks like a Kardashian. Shit happens, though. Man. Curse of the Kardashian love box. Hmm. If you think the Gucci the Gucci gang beat should be retired now that Jordan Lucas just uh just shit all over it, tap your love box. <laughs> he kicked his ass. Thank Murder. you. Nobody should even be on that beat anymore. No. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. All right. If you, if all you want for Christmas, oh, no, I I lost it. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. My bad. No, that's fine. If you want Mariah Carey to come back and actually sing on key and look slim like she did, slim and thick like she did back in the day, tap your lip box. Because I need Mariah to come back to be a Mariah again. Oh, man. Yeah, it looked like those calories caught up with a bank account. <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well. Are we, oh, is that it? that it? Y'all have any love boxes? Blink? Everybody has a love box. <laughs> I think we're done. Is that it? All right, cool. We might be there. Well, yeah. well, well. We appreciate you guys for coming on, even though Sean had to bounce on out of out of here. Well, the, the fake Sean, because we all know I'm the, the real Sean. one. Aziz, sorry. <laughs> Aziz, yeah. Aziz, yeah, my bad. Aziz. There you go. Yes, indeed. But yeah, thank you all for coming on. We definitely appreciate y'all. Uh, uh, you know, thank you all for coming on again. And um, yeah, why don't y'all go ahead and... And uh, you know, uh, give you a little shout, give you shout outs, and uh, you know, tell everybody where they can find your shows. What is good, y'all? You can follow me on Twitter at DJ Road Tie Twelve, and check us out on HHRT. We give you the most amazing reviews that we can, and check out our little segment, The Underground Zone. I hope you can guys can catch on to these reviews. I appreciate the likes and the views. Uh, I'm on uh, I'm Sean Smith on Facebook I'm Sean M. Smith 187 on uh, Hip Hop Amino and uh, check out check out HR on YouTube nice indeed and why don't y'all go ahead and uh, give a shout out or, or give a, I guess the last thoughts for Aziz since he had to bounce early thank you for doing this for us man we appreciate doing these reviews with you brother this, this has been a really fun time doing with this reviews man Thank you for having me on your crew, man. I appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, definitely. yeah, we, we definitely thank y'all for that. We definitely, uh, you know, would like to have y'all back again, uh, maybe long before the next Eminem album drops. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. We, we definitely like that. And, and uh, if y'all have some space and time for us, we'd love to come on uh, and review uh, you know, whatever with y'all uh, at some hey, point in time. So. We appreciate it. We'll let you know. Yes, indeed. That sounds good. That sounds good. And um, yeah, I guess uh, I know that we have some pretty big news uh, that that we uh, you know that we're gonna gonna talk about at some point in time. 
about an interview that we have coming up, but uh, we're just going to sort of hold off on that and leave everybody in suspense till that actually comes. Uh, but yeah, we have that information there, and uh, and you can hear us on a new platform. Uh, I know Jay's going to talk about all the rest of the ones, all the normal ones. You can hear us, but we just um, you know we just got our podcast up on the Spreaker uh, app and Spreaker.com, so you can hear us there. Hopefully, we'll get on the iHeartRadio one of these days. But Jay, uh, why don't you yes. tell everybody where they can find us? All right, everybody can hit us up. Twitter and Instagram at hashtag BlackoutPod. Snapchat, hashtag Bop. iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud. You can find our episodes, every single one of them. I think we're on 74, 3, 4, something like that. I don't know. Email us topics to discuss at hashtag BlackoutPod at gmail.com. You could send us a voicemail, 3853-BLAKPC. It's 3853252572. Go. Mm. And on that note, guys, we blacking out. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>